I used the Fold 4 for two weeks with my primary SIM card in it, and these are my thoughts. So this is a two-week review. It's pretty much my review, period, for this phone. And of course, I'm going to keep it. I traded in my Fold 3 for it. I took this, I traveled with it. I traveled to Africa, I went to Morocco, I went to Europe, I went to Germany, flew back through Iceland all the way back to the United States and used it as my primary phone. I used it with roaming. I took lots and lots of photos. And I'll show you the link here in a little bit because I took an extensive photo album and did a review on the cameras right here on this guy on the Fold 4. And I gotta say, very impressed. Uh, the camera experience is something that I was very, very, well, something I heavily scrutinized when it came to this phone because, I'm sorry, for an $1,800 phone, it was very disappointing with the Fold 3 cameras, which are basically just software enhanced versions of the Fold 2 cameras, which really were nothing to write home about. Now we have the 50 megapixel camera and it actually showed up. Like it showed up in a big way and it took some amazing photos. So if you're interested in seeing that, again, talk about it more in a little bit. I'll have the link you can go and watch the video and you can see all the wonderful camera samples I took. Great places. I, I, I went to some I went to some museums, some mosque stuff over in Morocco. I went to the mountain in the wine country in Germany. I, lots of places. So the phone itself, performance, top notch. One thing that impressed me the most was the battery life, which the battery life has been a moving target, honestly. For the first couple of days, it was blowing my mind. I was getting six and a half, seven hours of screen on time. It's the first time I ever really had a fold that lasted me all day long. And that was something I was really looking at because the Fold 3, for those of you who followed my channel, know I wasn't overly impressed with the Fold 3 battery life. And that's interesting because well, if you look on the paper, the battery size for the Fold 3 and the Fold 4, ha, it's the same. So what changed? Well, that would be the processor. So last year's iteration had the Snapdragon 888, not really known for being the best battery efficient phone on the planet. I mean, let's face it, it the Snapdragon 888 was in a lot of phones, battery life was nothing to write home about. So when you have a big screen, like a big screen on the inside that you use. You've got S Pen support, you've got a front screen, the cameras, there's a lot of stuff going on, 5G. You need a big battery. So I was concerned really about two things coming into this phone. One, the battery life, two, the cameras. And then also the rumors that just didn't come to fruition. Like we we're kind of hoping there would be an S Pen on the inside, which I have conflicted feelings about because this S Pen, I actually like using a lot better than the tiny one on my S22 Ultra. So good and bad. I do think that this case with Samsung is more thoughtful and it works better than the last iteration. So I, I'm kind of used to it at this point, but at the same point in time, it would be kind of nice if they streamlined it and make it all in one. So there was that. Then also the biggest, most disappointing rumor is, well, we were expecting to have S Pen support on the front screen. We still don't have that. So those two things really kind of frustrated me However, the largest one of those two being that there's no S Pen support on the front screen. So those things, battery life, cameras, I had concerns because we know there's not a lot of fundamental change. They it's Effectively, all they did was they removed part of the bezel on the front part of the screen and extended it out. Same size screen, but they have a different aspect ratio. The landscape is a little bit different. So when you pull it up, it does, when you look at it, it is actually slightly wider and slightly shorter. Has it made the experience better? Yes and no. Uh, the best thing that I find you can do with the front screen is of course to use the glide and swipe typing. Uh, I have small hands, especially for a dude, and still trying to type on it with my actual digits. You know, my fingers, phalanges, thumbs. It just doesn't work out very well. So going over the inside with the aspect ratio and the changes, it does feel easier to type on the inside for some reason as opposed to last year, but the front screen still uh, one-handed use in glide typing. It is still a very chunky phone. It's very chunky, very thick, especially with the camera, I'm sorry, the case on it. It makes for a very, very big phone. And I wanna show you something. I'm gonna show you a phone that I got. So this phone is actually from a company by the name of Huawei. And this is their Mate XS2. This is their folding phone. And I want you to see side by side, look at the difference here. Look at how much thinner this design is. Much more thoughtful design. And of course, this one opens up. So what I'm gonna show you here, I mean, there's a button you can press. This is the case it comes with it. Press the button. Voila. Look at that. Look how thin this is. Look how thin the Mate XS2 is as opposed to the chunky boy over here, the Fold 4. And then also, ta-da, big screen. So let me open up the Fold 4 just so we can see both of these side by side. There's a big difference here. 
And then look, look how much thinner. It's so much more thin and it's easier and better to hold. There's a lot of things I like about this. And then of course, bam, close it right back up. So just so you can see side by side comparison, Samsung, I think, could do better. And largely, I've even talked to some of my friends, had some discussions, because you know, we like these cutting edge foldable phones. There are different ways that you can do it. There are different designs, but Samsung, by and large, the thought process is they're lazy. They've gotten lazy with this. They've rested on their laurels because as nice as this phone is, and look how, look how much nicer the big screen is on the front as opposed to the fold. Like, this is essentially an S22 Ultra that folds out into a Fold 4. This is a skinny little fat brick that opens up into a Fold 4. So, yeah, Samsung doesn't have competition in the U.S., so they can just keep doing this, giving us minimal improvements and still charging $1,800. And largely, I think a lot of people were expecting or hoping for a price drop because the phone's expensive. And there's not a lot of fundamental changes here, especially when they're still using an older camera, don't even have the 108 megapixel. So, yes, those are largely the criticisms of the phone. However, I've enjoyed it. I, I really did. I did just take my SIM card out of it because I missed my Xperia 1 Mark IV. As much as I like this, and I've had the same problem with the Fold, the Fold 2, the Fold 3, the Fold 4. It's a very fun phone, very exciting phone. Lots of cool things you can do here. But for me, having a full-size screen that I can use all the time, like this one right here on my Sony, is much better for me than being able to use this tiny thing. It is inconvenient for me. I, yes, I know there's an expectation. Of course, you, you have a full phone, you're going to open it up. I do a lot of typing. I do a lot of replies to comments. I do a lot of tweeting. 90% of what I do with any one of my phones is I type, type, type all the time. This is not the best for typing. This is also not the best for typing for me. And that's what really gets me. If you do a ton of typing all the time and you don't want to sit there with the screen open all the time, and I still type faster and more efficiently on a screen this size as opposed to this size or as opposed to this size. Uh, for me to be able to type with my thumbs on that, it, it works, but it's still not as fast. You got to move a larger distance, not as efficient. But I carry this now as a secondary phone, like I did with my Fold 3. And it's one of those things, I make all my thumbnails on it. I use it every night. I put several hours a day on my Fold phone, even not using it as a primary phone. So, But that's an unrealistic scenario. Uh, most people are not going to carry around an $1,800 phone as a secondary phone. I'm a tech enthusiast. I buy way too many phones. And yeah, that's just kind of the reality for it, for me. So talking about it from that perspective, just me, just being real and honest with you, I can't use this as a solo everyday phone. I know some people can, and I know some people love this phone as a daily driver. I know people who have seen praises of them, and it's a good phone. It's a very, very good phone. The hardware is good. The Snapdragon 8 Plus Generation 1, 12 gigs of RAM. Uh, the modem is solid in here. The cameras are way improved. The S Pen experience is good, even though you can't do it on the front screen. It, it is what it is. I, 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 If they ever can make something more like this, it would be so much better because having this kind of landscape as opposed to this is a better working model, at least in my, my opinion. However, there are a lot of things here, the very thoughtful design, the new Android 12 underlying software, the multitasking you've got down on the bottom now, you've got this taskbar where you can quick switch to other apps. It's so good. They are finally actually, I think, emphasizing the software experience a lot more. And as much as they didn't improve a lot of the hardware and the design, they did improve the software experience better for multitasking, better for multi-app usage. And it's just, it's quick, it's fast, it works great, and largely it's going to last you all day. I did have some shortcomings with the battery. When I was out and about, I was on roaming, of course, which that does hurt the battery. But being in another country, shooting video and photo all day, I was getting barely three and a half hours of screen on time. So if you're going to be shooting a lot of photo and video with this, it's going to kill your battery, just like any other phone it would. However, I did expect it to hold up better. And that's the thing. The Snapdragon 8 Plus Generation 1, as good as it is at saving battery and doing things better with less power, once it's under load, it still sucks up the battery quick. Just like a Snapdragon 888, just like an 8 Generation 1, all those other power-hungry processors it will burn through it. It doesn't get overly hot, which is nice. That's something that Samsung has taken good care of with some of their last couple of phones. The 888 had a lot of heat issues, the 8 generation one less. This one definitely in the power efficiency, the heat department and things like that is much better. So if you want to get one, it's not something I recommend getting over the Fold 3. If, if I were not a tech reviewer 
I would have stuck with my Fold 3. I would not have bought the Fold 4. I just don't think there's enough here to merit that. However, the battery life increase is better. It's very notable. And also the cameras are much better. I don't go around snapping a lot of photos with my Fold phone. I, I don't know about you. If you use it as a primary phone, I'm sure you probably do. That's like a kind of philosophical discussion to have there. However, for me, personally, the benefits of this phone do not outweigh the cost, even, the, even though I got $1,000 trading credit. So looking at an $800 year-over-year -year upgrade through Samsung. So yes, I like it. I think it's good. If you have a Fold 2, a Fold 1, if it's your first Fold, top notch. You're going to probably love it. It's going to be a great experience. It's going to be worth the money. If you have a Fold 3, I would wait till next year and see if they change things up and do a little bit more aggressive stuff with the design change, making it a better phone overall with a better design language, ergonomics and the screen and stuff like that. I think they can do better. I'm hoping they do at some point, and I thought it was going to be this year, but it's not. So maybe, maybe next year. So I think it's a good phone. I think that they improved a lot of the stuff where it needed to, the software experience, better, better at multitasking, the camera experience and the battery. Those three things right there, the key tenants that I expected there to be some improvement and they did. And I think they did it in a good way. So I think there are meaningful upgrades here that you can see that look that as you get below the surface to find, they did make some changes. But when you look at it year over year and the Fold 2 and the Fold 3 and the Fold 4 are identically designed and there's basically very minimal change, you hope for a little bit more, maybe something, maybe some changes here and there to improve as we get to still paying $1,800 for a phone. And then, of course, arguably, there's the discussion where, well, this is their settled design, and they're just making refinements, just like you get with the iPhone. They're not radical changes with the iPhone every year, just like you get with the S22. There's not radical design changes other than the fact they, well, they took the Note and turned it into the S22 Ultra, but largely, you get the point. Once there is a settled design, there's not a whole lot of changes, so maybe we won't see radical changes even over the next year or two. Who knows? I will be covering it. I'll follow it. I pay a lot of money for these phones. I spend a lot of time testing them. Again, I forgot to show you this earlier, but the link to my camera review is right here. So if you click, or maybe it's right here, one of the two, it'll pop up. You can click on it. You can go watch that and you can see like probably 60 or 70 photos. I took tons of photos and put them in there so you could see different lighting conditions, daytime, less than ideal lighting conditions, lots of stuff and plenty of food you can look at too. So yeah, Fold to two weeks. I like it. I love it. I don't really want more of it. I, I'm going to keep using it as a secondary phone. I don't see myself putting my SIM card back in it. I had some feelings as I had put it back in my Sony. Y'all guys know I love my Xperia 1 Mark IV, despite the heating issues I had with the camera. Whole other story. But the Fold 4 is not a daily driver for me. I, I, I just, I can't do it. Uh, but also this case has held up really well. If you do buy one, there's been a lot of controversy with the case. This front part, people saying it pops off. Here's the thing. Clean the surface very well. Like get an alcohol wipe, a lens wipe, clean all around it, let it dry, and then put it on. It'll have a nice adhesive contact. Mine was on there stuck good. Uh, it, it took some willpower and some effort, some elbow grease to pop it off to take my SIM card out of it yesterday. Yeah, I, I think if you put it on there, if you use the front of the phone, you get it greasy, you get dirt, you get into debris on there. No, it's not going to make good surface contact for the adhesive that's on here. So do that, clean it, put it on there. I think you'll be golden. So wrapping this one up, I like it. I think it's a great phone for people who love folds. It's going to be a good one for you. And I think that you'll love it. It'll work for a good long time. Plenty of support because Samsung has the best support in the Android world. Four years of, of software updates, five years security patches, everything you possibly ask for. I know I didn't really talk about specs. This is not a specs video. This is what I think about it and my review. You can go see all the pretty photos, the pretty videos, Go read the GSM Arena spec sheet. Everybody knows what's in these things. They want to know, is it good? Is it worth it? How does it work? Is it improved? And I think I, I tried really hard to answer that here from my experience. So that's all I got. Again, you have any questions or comments, please go down in the comment section. I will get back with you. If you enjoyed the video, if you found this helpful, please hit the like and the subscribe button and the little notification bell if you want updates when new videos come out. And as always, thanks for being here. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you guys next time.